looking at a six foot four stack of mistakes. I have them on my body. You guys want to see one right now? Yeah. Check out that sweet peach right there. I got that in Portland at the, at the Sea Hag, if you know where that is. Yeah, I got that. Or the Sea Tramp. I'm, I was 19. I got it on a dare in a pool hall, which is always a good way to make decisions. Can you see what that is? Go ahead, call it out. D, right? Detroit D? Yeah, totally. Except that's a B. Whoops! What a dipshit I am! It even looks like another tattoo. What a magnificent asshole. That's a fuck up. I think they discontinued the gothic letter B after Detroit made their D so iconic. At 19, I doomed myself to an entire lifetime of any time I'm ever in a swimming pool, someone's like, yeah, Detroit! And I'm like, no, Bronger, my name, fuck you! <laughs> Shut up! Look closer, like super close. What a dummy. My buddy Eli came back to town, an older kid I always looked up to, rode up on his motorcycle to the pool hall, you know? We were some real bad boys back then, and not me, him. And he comes in and he's like, check out my tat. He's got a big hawk on his chest, and I'm like, sweet. He's like, you should get one. I'm like, Psh, I've been thinking about it. I hadn't, not once, not once. <laughs> he goes, what are you thinking? I'm like, uh, think fast, think fast. Uh, gothic letter B for my name. And he's like, awesome, let's go. And I was like, what? Uh, oh, I don't have my mom's car. And he's like, it's cool, man. I got my bike, hop on. And I did. What? That's right. I rode bitch to get my first tattoo. <laughs> Your back is so warm. Mm. Go faster. I love the wind in my hair. I feel like a man. <laughs> But I love it, I love it now, because it's a permanent mistake. I laugh every time I see it in the morning. Every time. And I love dumb tattoos, you know? I hate meaningful tattoos, you know? Just, just the ones that were well thought out. It's like, ugh. Because everyone, even when they're, when they're thinking of it, they're like, ah, it's gonna be on me forever. So it has to sum up everything I've ever loved or done, or smelled, or seen, or tasted. Or, Fuck off, Ashley, get a cheeseburger or a knife. No one cares. It's your body, it's a tattoo, it's a permanent mistake, no matter how gorgeous it is. You guys are probably, you know, going, well, Matt, how are you, a white male, so goddamn woke? I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> so, it's so typical white male. This is how woke I am, check it out, bro. Listen, all it is, as a white person in America, you just have to be aware of white privilege. That's all, just be aware. Just start from there and then explore, you know? And it, sometimes it's, it's hard to tell about your white privilege for some, for some people. I mean, you and you're, a lot of you are probably going, no it isn't, but do you think the gin blossoms were aware of their white privilege? <laughs> probably not, probably not. And I'm not just picking a random, incredibly white band. I'm not. They sang the most white privileged lyric of all time. Of all time. They literally sang, tomorrow we can drive around this town and let the cops chase us around. Yeah, just let them chase us around. What the fuck they gonna do, man? You know who my dad is? I'm Chad McDonald, Sigma Sigma Chi, bitch. Hap, hap. Woo! I love being white. Like, that is insane. <laughs> Just let the cops. Ice Cube could not sing that lyric. <laughs> I hope they see this, because they'll probably be like, oh, fuck, I never thought of that, you know? <laughs> I'm not blaming the gin blossoms. We've all made mistakes. At a 24-hour fitness here in Portland when I was visiting uh, a couple years ago, and I went in there, worked out, and I was leaving. And it's one of those places that has a room for anything you can do to improve your body, like a room for weights, room for yoga, room for stretching, room for spinning, you know, of course, showers and lockers, and a room for sinks. I go in, it's two guys separated by about five or six sinks, one's shaving, one's buttoning his shirt and combing his hair. 
But they're both moving incredibly fast and nervously. They're, you know, shaking. Like, only they know a comet's gonna hit in like half an hour. Like, guy's buttoning his shirt wrong, like the wrong buttons with the wrong holes, and combing his hair like he's trying to scalp himself. Just. And the guy's shaving like he's mad he has too much face. Like, hurry! Hurry! And I'm like, what is happening? And I hear, out of the corner of my ear, I hear the hand dryer going, the and I look and I went, ah! Because that's when I saw him. A 70 year old man, if he was a day, 70, buck naked. <laughs> buck naked. The sink room, nowhere near the lockers or showers. <laughs> and I know you're thinking, homeless, nope, nice haircut. Naked, with the hand dryer turned down just to dry off his dick and nuts, <laughs> meticulously. <laughs> Every time he got close, it sounded like a bandsaw. <laughs> Feet up with the exertion. <laughs> Ass clenched and quivering. Like a fleshy white walnut. Looked like a marble brain. It was amazing. The longest pubes I've ever seen in my life. You know how I know? Because I saw them from behind. From behind, I could see his lion's mane and winter pubes. Some of them flying away and leaving, each with their own story to tell, like Forrest Gump's feather. You remember. I was with my parents in a crowded museum, right? My dad had taken off without telling anyone. He's the master of the French or Irish goodbye. Ever since he retired, he'll just be like, is that a boat? And he's gone, right? They'll find me, fuck him, just wanders. It's his right as a man above 60. So my mother says, where's your father? And I wish every day, Every day, I wish I would have gone, I don't know, or that way, or anything (laughs) besides what I did, which is point like this. First off, who points like this, like a gun, and didn't look and went, I think he went that way. And my fingers went into a man's mouth, in, into his mouth and head, full penetration, full. Not a poke, like my eye, ow, my neck. Hey, you got me in the tit, you jerk. Nope. I felt the hot wetness. I felt the mysteries of his teeth and tongue. I know things I shouldn't know. And I heard the ha, like the choke. Got him deep. My mom's hands went up and her eyes got huge. And they said nothing but you've disgraced our family name forever. And I pulled my hand out and spittle came with it. Yeah, and I wiped it, which seemed disrespectful at the time. Like, oh. And just said, oh. A long vowel sound. That's a nice apology. But the guy, something got messed up in his head because his hand came up, but it came up late and it came up wrong. His hand did like, and his hand went side of his head. Like his brain was like, what the fuck? Plug the hole. No, lower, too late. I was in a hotel in Dallas on the 19th floor, right? When you're on the top floor, you're like, I'm the cat's ass, right? Everyone can kiss it, who cares? You know, pressing your dick against the glass. No one can see. You're so high up. I did not know that the entire hotel was full of University of Texas kids from Austin. They were the Dallas versus Austin game that weekend. I was late for my own show, and I left a half an hour in advance to get there. I'm not even going to tell you all the things that happened. I'm just going to give you the highlights. I get on. I go one floor down. The door opens, a hand snakes around the door, boop, stops it. Does not go, hey, I'm gonna hold the door, bro, is that cool? Nope, just holds it, turns, and it's just like, Trevor, 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 I got the door, Trevor, Trevor. Trevor, Trevor. I'm about to kick his wrist and break it. Trevor comes running, I can't see him, it's a diagonal hallway kicks off his flip-flop, flies in the elevator, hits the wall. Trevor thinks elevators operate on a force field technology. (laughs) Jumps in like, yeah, looks for a high five, sees he has none and is like, oh. (laughs) Doors close, I'm with these bozos. One floor down, it opens, party floor, full. It's like fucking boogie nights. Everyone's dancing. This guy stands in the doorway, talking to these kids. 
The doors are banging against him. He will not let us leave. And he won't react. He's reacting like he's being tickled. Like, yeah, man. It's like, oh, yeah, there's a lot of hot chick there. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> I put my hand in his chest, softly push him in. The doors close. We go down. I hear him go, bye. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> Next floor, empty. I think this kid bought it out to fill all the rooms with drugs. Because he gets on, his eyes are black marbles. So dilated. Gets on. And he's that guy that does not know how to act. <laughs> Normally, like an alien trying to fit in. <laughs> Keeps trying and failing to fold his own arms. <laughs> like, don't make a running jump, just fold him. <laughs> and he's trying to lean on shit that's not there. <laughs> Keeps looking at us. He finally decides, I know how to be normal and stands in the corner like this. <laughs> He Blair Witched all of us. <laughs> Next floor down, a couple gets on, emaciated model couple, boy and a girl, and they keep doing the worst version of who's on first I've ever seen. Where one will be like, corn dogs. Another one goes, fuck yeah. Pizza, fuck yeah. Over and over. <laughs> We're, go, we go down one more floor, the thickest party floor ever. A dude gets in the elevator, literally says to all of us, what's in this room? It's not a room. Get off. Him I pushed. I'm like a bouncer. I'm like, I'm gonna be late. Paw, just fine, threw him right back. And the door's shut. We're about to get off. And I gotta be honest, at this point, I started out furious. Now I'm gonna miss these kids, you know? It's just entertaining. The door is about to open, and the girl of the Who's On First duo, out of nowhere, just goes, I just know if they don't have chicken fingers, I'm gonna fucking kill someone. <laughs> And this guy who's been in the corner and said nothing the whole time just turns and goes, Baka! What the fuck? Did you just turn into a chicken? Because she said chicken fingers? And he slapped his hand over his face like he'd sneeze. Baka! Excuse me. I am clearly an alien blowing my cover right now.